The newest episode of The Walking Dead just premiered early on AMC Plus and I just watched it and I'm about to discuss it, give you my first thoughts, my first overall reaction, but before I get too deep into it, we'll be full of spoilers, so if you're interested in The Walking Dead, I do recommend you go watch the episode first and then come back and watch this. Though this video isn't going to be a play-by-play, -play, I will mention some brief topics just to let you know what my thoughts are. And obviously before I get too deep into it, consider subscribing. I do TV show discussions, movie discussions, trailer reactions, that sort of thing. And obviously if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, I talk about every episode of The Walking Dead universe that airs and I'm going to continue to do so even after The Walking Dead's end into Fear Season 8 and all the spinoffs. Anyway, this episode was extremely average to me. It didn't have a lot of the lows that The Walking Dead has been having in recent years in my opinion, but it also didn't reach any of of the heights that some of the recent episodes have reached. And that's honestly quite concerning to me because there's only four episodes left. Only four episodes left of this amazing TV show that I've loved for a decade. And it's kind of stressful knowing that with only four episodes left, we're still getting average episodes. But that's not to say that the episode were bad, obviously. There were moments that I really, really enjoyed or that's an over exaggeration. I didn't really, really enjoy them, but there were moments that I enjoyed or maybe even really enjoyed, but not really, really enjoyed. The parts that I liked the most were obviously the scenes with Daryl, Carol, and then Hornsby. And spoiler alert, the scene, Hornsby's last scene, where he dies, I found pretty good. I liked Hornsby. I found him really compelling as a character. Whenever he was on screen, I had no idea what he was going to do. I had no idea when he was being truthful and when he wasn't. And I'm honestly really, really surprised to see him die before his grand plan took place. Because as soon as he was introduced, I thought that he was gonna be the main villain, not Pamela. I thought he would successfully overthrow Pamela if that was indeed his plan. That's what I thought his plan was gonna be, was to use Pamela's corruption and the Milton's corruption and the Commonwealth's corruption to put himself in charge and then he was gonna be even more corrupt and violent. That's what I thought was gonna happen, but that's not what that's not what happened. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I really, really like that. I like how it was unpredictable. I like how it didn't feel like a plot progressing in a way that writers wanted it to progress. Writers wanted it to progress, if you know what I mean. Like, obviously this is what they wanted to happen, but it felt surprising and unexpected. So I liked it. And I liked how there wasn't a final showdown. There wasn't a final battle. There wasn't like this big epic fight scene with him being killed. It was just him out in the woods kind of pleading for his life, attempting to fight for his life, and then just being killed and dying with no speech or any, I mean, he kind of had a speech, but it was more of a plea than a speech. And I liked it, it felt compelling. Not every villain needs to have this big epic showdown before their death. Even though I found this episode extremely average, um, I do think that it built up to what I'm hoping is an extremely strong, action-packed and really dramatic final four episodes. Because obviously there's been a lot of tension between the Commonwealth and our survivors leading up to this point. And then in this point is when, I've said in a few episodes shit finally happens and shit has finally happened, but I honestly feel like this is kind of the episode where they reach the point of no return. You know what I mean? Like Daryl and Carol kill several Commonwealth soldiers. And then obviously Pamela is having our survivors shipped away to who knows where with shit injected in their necks. And like, this is it, you know what I mean? Like there's no coming back from this. And hopefully that just leads to a really good final four episodes. That's, that's all we can hope for. Like, again, I've said this a million billion times, but I was hoping that The Walking Dead would feel the Walking Dead season 11 would feel like a finale, that it wouldn't just feel like a build up to multiple spinoffs. Like The Walking Dead deserves more than that. The Walking Dead deserves to feel like a conclusion with a couple loose ends leading into the spinoffs. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's what's happening. So at this point, the most that I can hope for is that it's just an amazing build up to spinoffs. And Hornsby raised an interesting point. When the Miltons are defeated, if the Miltons are defeated, there's going to be a power vacuum and who's going to be in charge? And that got me thinking, who do you want to be in charge of the Commonwealth? Like, who do you want to be in charge of every group that we know? Supposedly, potentially, maybe coming together. Like, if they defeat the Commonwealth, I'm sure it'll create a string of communities, you know, Alexandria, Hilltop, Oceanside, if they're still alive, and then the Commonwealth sort of being 
the main group governing the rest, or at least being the connecting factor between groups. Who would you like to see lead that? At first I thought Maggie, because Maggie's arc has more or less been about leadership ever since she joined Alexandria. Like Deanna taught her to lead, and then she led Hilltop, and then she led her own group, and then she came back to lead Hilltop, but as we know, that's probably not gonna happen, spoiler alert, but Maggie is gonna have a spinoff that takes place in Manhattan. Plus, I feel like Maggie cares less about leadership and democracy these days and is more on the defense, and rightfully so, so I don't think she'd necessarily mentally be the right person to lead uh, the Commonwealth at this point in her life. So I feel like the obvious choice, honestly, and it again, it is kind of the obvious choice in my opinion, and that's um, Yumiko. I feel like Yumiko would make the best leader in the current situation that they're in. Anyway, that's my quick and brief thoughts on the newest episode of The Walking Dead. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments. And are you liking this final season? Honestly, because like, I have such mixed emotions about this final season. Is it as good as a final season of one of my favorite shows of all time should be? No, but it's still better than recent Walking Dead seasons. Is it better than season nine? I'm going to say no. Is it better than season 10? Probably not, but I, I only watched season 10 once. Most Walking Dead seasons I watched through multiple times. Uh, that wasn't the case with season 10. So I got to rewatch season 10 and then rewatch season 11 to really compare. But there's no denying it's better than seasons eight and uh, not, uh, seven, I mean, seven and eight. And obviously it's better than the trash can fire that was Fear the Walking Dead season seven and uh, the disappointment that was The Walking Dead World Beyond. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, especially if you watched this far. Consider subscribing and uh, yeah, just thank you for watching.